Hello, this is the fifth in a series of videos concerning the two-level factorial designs. And before watching this video, you should have reviewed the two-level design part two notes. And in this video, we're going to spend a little more time getting in depth about the jump prediction profiler. Again, the profiler is a dynamic visualization of the model and is a very important tool for analysis in a designed experiment. And in my experience working with hundreds, if not thousands, of engineers and scientists, they find this a very powerful tool for analysis. So the profiler basically has the following components. Okay. The y-axis gives you the predicted response plus you're given a 25 or a 95 percent confidence interval for the response. And then for each factor, you're given a profile. And I'm going to show in a moment these profiles actually represent the slope of the response surface or the shape of the response surface in any region you specify by the current setting. So here, at 0, 0, the response surface is essentially flat in temperature and slightly sloping down in additive concentration. So I illustrate this on the next slide. To the right is a 3D view of the response surface. You saw this earlier in the analysis of the strength data. And I have added a couple of grids or slices, and these slices are at the settings 0.25 for temperature. Okay, So that's going in, if I can show it to you, this direction, and then minus 0.75 in concentration. Notice, if you look where the grids intersect, the response surface in additive is indeed sloping downward, and the response surface in temperature is nearly flat. I know it's a little hard to see, but if you look at additive concentration, okay, the slice is at minus 0.75. You can see it is sloping down. And then the slice for temperature is at 0.25. And you can see it's pretty much flat. So that's why they're called uh, profile traces. So they tell you how the response is relating to the factors at specific uh, settings of the factors. So it's a very powerful tool to help you understand what the response surface looks like for any particular settings of the factors. And that by itself is useful, but built into the profiler, is a very powerful optimization uh, function, sometimes called desirability functions. And I'm going to demonstrate them to you in jump in just a moment. But desirability functions are what are commonly used in statistics for optimization problems. Okay. And we're not going to go into great depth on them. But to get them under the profile menu, there's an option called desirability functions. When you select it from the profiler menu, you get a function profile. That's the shape of the desirability profile. And you'll see in a moment that's tied directly to what your objectives are for optimization. And you get what are called desirability traces. There's actually a desirability response surface. And basically, what these desirability traces do, they show you how the desirability of the response relates to the settings of the factors. Okay. So at temperature, at 0 0.507, and concentration minus 0.777, if I go up in concentration, desirability goes down. In other words, the response is less desirable. And at 
in temperature. If I go up, desirability goes up. So what do we mean by desirability? Uh, desirability is basically determined by the objectives of the analyst. Basically, what's happening internally in the software, there is a mathematical function that maps the response, so here, strength, to a dimensionless scale of 0 to 1. Okay. So every strength value gets mapped to a desirability value, and desirability ranges from 0 to 1. 0 means the less desirable, 1 means the most desirable. So the function profile is sloping upward. That indicates that the higher the response, the higher the desirability. So this would be maximization. So this is what the function profile would look like if you wanted to maximize. And there are basically three uh, function profile shapes. These can be customized, but these are the basic ones you use. This is on the left. This is for maximization. In other words, a higher response is more desirable. Minimization, a lower response is most desirable. And then finally, one that's often very important in engineering and science, match a target. So here we give a target for the response. And the closer we can get to the target, by manipulating the settings of our factors, the more desirable. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go over to jump. If we can get there. Okay, I want to go one more. There we go. The strength data, and I'm going to get rid of this one. Okay, so this is the strength data again. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to Analyze Fit Model. And I'm going to define a full factorial model in temperature and additive, and strength is the response. And again, I'm going to change the effect leverage to screening. So I've been through the analysis in the uh, initial uh, video in the series that we're doing on two-level designs. Okay, so you've seen the response surface. Here's the model, and here's the profiler. Well, if I want to optimize, that is, I want to find the most optimum settings of temperature and concentration, then using the model, and the desirability functions, jump is going to do essentially a brute force search through the experimental region to try to find the settings that will result in the most desirable response. So I click on the profiler menu. I select desirability functions. By default, when you first do this, Give a little more screen room here. Okay, when you first do this, the default is to maximize. So every value okay, of strength is converted, this is just a straight linear function, is converted to desirability. So what I'm going to tell Jump to do is using the model, search for settings of temp and additive concentration that give me the maximum response, because that's what is most desirable. So go back to the Prediction Profiler menu and select Maximize and Remember. Okay. So Jump has found that if I run at high temperature and low concentration, I get the highest predicted strength of close to 34 PSI. Now, suppose I didn't want to maximize. Maybe I want to sell aftermarket. I want to sell a lot of these plastic parts as replacements. So I told the engineers to minimize strength. Now, who would really do that? 
Well, I guess if you're cynical, too many people. So if I want to change the desirability function, put the cursor in the desirability or function profile window, double click, and up pops your response goal window. And I'm going to change it to minimize. I want to minimize the response. Okay. So once again, I'm, and by the way, notice it's sloping down. So this time, there we go. If we can get this right. So this time, a high response maps to low desirability. So again, I go and I click maximize and remember. Jump comes back and said, if you want the lowest strength, run at high temp and high additive concentration. Okay. And now there's actually one more scenario. What if I wanted to match a target? So I'm going to select match target. And I'm going to say my target. I'm going to pick a number. I don't have a specific one in mind. But let's say 30 plus or minus 2. So I have engineering specifications that say the tensile strength of these parts should be between 32 and 28 PSI, and I'd like to hit a target of 30. Okay. Now notice the shape of the desirability function. Okay. The highest desirability comes if I hit the target. But notice, if I hit beyond the boundaries that I have set my specifications, then the desirability is essentially zero. So I'm going to click again and say maximize and remember. Okay. And it's found a solution. So notice, if I run at temperature at 0.59, concentration at minus 0.58, I hit 30. Okay. Now let me start over. I want to show you something. I remember, I'm still trying to maximize a target. So I'm going to start again, maximize and remember. Okay. I hit 30, but notice something. I didn't get the same solution. And people at first are often um, concerned about this, and I have to explain. In match a target, we are simply looking for settings of temperature and concentration, again, through the model, that give us the predicted target strength. There are, in theory, infinite possible solutions, because there are infinite ways to hit 30 by manipulating temperature and concentration. And unless we add further constraints to the problem, the jump software is simply going to stop when it hits a solution. By the way, every one of these solutions will work. For you, the engineer, some may be better than others, but you probably want to add an additional constraint. For instance, you might add a cost column and calculate a cost and try to minimize cost as well as hit the target. So I could keep doing this exercise of uh, trying to match a target and starting over. Jump is just going to start at a random location, search the experimental region, stop when it finds a hit. That is 30. So there are literally, and you can even show this theoretically, I think it's obvious practically there are infinite solutions. And that basically describes the functioning of the profiler and how to use desirability for optimization. Later in the course, we'll get into some other capabilities. But for now, these are basic capabilities that you should now become familiar with.